Okay guys, it's time to play some Opus 6 Mono Wind. Okay, I'm on the play. Uh, this hand looks pretty keepable. We've got a 2 cost backup in there, some stuff I don't mind binning early on, and if things go horribly, Lezifer doesn't feel terrible on turn 2. So I think we can chuck away the summon, the costliest summon in the hand, get ourselves a backup in play, and we've got some kind of a follow-up in Lezifer if we don't draw into something better. Although I'd probably prefer a sort of a 3 cost forward and a 2 cost back, uh, a second 2 cost backup. Still, we've got the Zidane, we've got the win condition. Definitely, I wouldn't actually mind throwing away Chaos or Barbaricia to drop the Lezivert into play. Oh my god, is this a mono wind mirror? It's probably wind lightning. Uh, that backup is quite common in wind lightning. Cactuar as well is kind of the hallmark of lightning. Don't really want to stick the Maria into play here. Uh, if this is wind lightning, then Trey's going to be a whole load more useful elsewhere. Okay, let's get 3 CP. 5 CP, I don't need those. Now it's a bit of a toss up, but I'm going to say we don't need Maria yet, whereas Trey, we've only got two copies in the deck. Let's get the Lezivert into play. Now this is useful because there's so many more live cards in deck. All our backups, all our forwards, literally all our forwards. So only the summons would be the rare misses. I'm sure there's a way to put five cards into play. Oh dear, where? there we go. Okay. Okay, one summon is a miss, and Archer wouldn't feel very good because we're not getting as much free CP. Although the card doesn't need to be in our hand for Lezifer to play it, I would prefer something higher value. Uh, I don't think we've even got any really good follow-up plays in hand if we were to play a two-cost backup of Lezifer. So I think Zidane looks like the best thing here. Again, if we're against Wind Lightning, there's a whole load of abilities that Wind Lightning just doesn't have or, or, or don't work. Stuff like Cactuar or... Uh, Sort of Al said, uh, can't be Al said it here, and uh, instead is going to do a huge amount of work on their hand. Alternatively, if they end up wanting to cast an Odin or something just now, just to get rid of Zidane, they're also losing an absolute ton of cards in hand. And I consider either way that he does his job to be a good thing. I guess this is the turn where we'll find out if they are Wind Lightning or if they're a kind of a weird mono wind. I guess that before now, Cactuar was just about the best unconditional removal that mono wind had. Not playing any in this build. Okay, Cactuar. Could be Orlando in hand, but we're not afraid of that yet. I'm thinking that Trey has some additional pressure this coming turn. It, it just feels more and more like Wind Lightning. And my opponent's thinking here because I don't think that they probably don't have anything else that's really neat to play on curve. But are above number of cards in hand, so they'd have to discard down. Yeah, just looking at Lezifer there, uh, Lezifer looks pretty good in this kind of matchup. There goes an Alcid, loses an Alcid for another backup. Could be there's another Alcid in hand. Um, let's find out this turn. Probably opponent doesn't want to do anything else here, so I'm just waiting for them to pass turn. Here we go. Let's take the field back. Draw for turn. Bart's and... Mm. Arts and Arc, two odd costed things. Two things that would have looked better if we would played the Archer off Lezifer the previous turn. But let's go to combat, turn it in sideways, get some value. Uh, if nothing else, we're going to see our opponent's hand, but it'd be wonderful if we could rip something out. I don't know if our opponent's maybe seen uh, all that much Opus 6 just yet. Maybe they're just taking a read of Zidane. I think it'd be rude for me to forcefully reveal. What do we have here? Oh, a couple of hits, a couple of good hits. Onion Knight, oh wow, they, they threw away Al said, even though there was Onion Knight in hand. I think I would have thrown away the Onion Knight if I was playing the, the Wind Onion Knight, just as a way to retrieve it. I think the Orlando looks like the biggest tip. They've got the Cactuar assembled, and although we've got Trey and Zidane in hand, it would be a really efficient way of dealing with our Barts or dealing with Ark and stuff, and I kind of want to keep those. So I know they've got an Onion Knight in hand, but I also know they're one Zidane down. And Maria, I feel like Maria mostly just does Cactuar's job, and she's really not that exciting if you've already got Cactuar's there. She's just a kind of a backup plan. And uh, attack is still going through, even though Zidane untaps himself. Okay, that's an Eloa in damage, which uh, would be tricky for us to deal with. Would be tricky, I say. Second main, let's get something else down here. Given that this deck that we're playing against is probably going to have a hard time dealing with Zidane, I'm reckoning we can afford to lose second one from hand just to get out another piece of decent pressure. 
opponent takes the turn. The only on-curve play that I really know about in hand is Seymour, who's useless here, or Maria, who is, if not useless, not exactly useful here. Wow, th 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 this really feels like a good matchup. Th th this deck is taking a lot of the hex-proof and hard-to-target elements of traditional mono wind, sort of canny Senna mono wind, but it's just a much more aggressive shell. Let's see what they're thinking. Thief could be good here, although, although having said that, even though I know that there are targets that Thief could hit in their hand just now, I don't really want to crack it yet. It's much more important to curve out and ramp out, and I want to get these five cost bodies onto the field. Opponent pays one. Opponent loses the Onion Knight. Oh, Adele, okay. And that's a Ramu as well, okay. Yep, summons uh, summons affected Dane. So that's 7,000 damage to him. Shame there wasn't a neat way we could have gotten Ark into play, but I guess we didn't know at the time. They must, it's just a lucky top deck they got the Ramu that turn. And uh, that's gonna, yeah, dull Trey as well. Decent little two-for-one. Means that Adele doesn't have to pay to be unblockable this turn. I don't mind going one-for-one for, one for damage. I think that in card quality, Trey is so good against the majority of what our opponents are doing. And in order to just pu push through this one point of damage and deal with Zidane, our opponent's hand is gone. His work here is done. Let's take the turn. Another backup, maybe? Yeah, another backup. Okay. Well, unless they top deck Eloa, and there's one of them in the bin, I don't see us taking more than one point of damage here. So I would much rather just ramp out. And I think... Mm, mm, yeah, I'll pass there. I'll pass there. I think I would be okay with them spending the one CP to make Adele unblockable. It's not exactly easy for them to force their way through Trey otherwise. It could be something like Quetzalcoatl, but... For some reason, I'm not feeling it. I think that if they're playing a removal-heavy build like this with, with Ramu too, then it's not likely. They're having a think. Since I very much doubt they've got a way of removing Trey on just three cards and two backups, I wouldn't be surprised if they went straight to combat. Okay, drops an archer. Drop some Maria. Oh, Lusso. Okay. Okay. Well, I guess that Lusso and potentially the, the backup on a subsequent turn could give me a bit of a problem. Oh, there we go. Now I know there's a way that you can look at five cards all at once. Nothing here that's really... No, nothing here that Lusso's going to take for one. But also nothing I'm really scared of. Back to the deck. And wow, that completely emptied their hand. I guess there's no real reason... Oh, really? They're not attacking? Surprising. Okay. Let's keep drawing. Oh yeah, here we go. Here we go. So we might as well go to combat and attack with Trey. Because it's feeling like a Bart's turn. Uh, we can get a free Aerith into play here. Um, we, we tap three backups. Aerith then untaps three backups, and since our opponent clearly doesn't have a response, I'll just skip to the good bit. As much... Mm, yeah, I, I feel like Bart's is going to be a colossal target for them, and then playing another one of them right away would feel good. Yeah, yeah, let's, let, yeah I, I, I was thinking, do we put Bart's into play here? One of the Bart's at, at the expense of the other Bart's or something, but... I think a much better thing to do here is get Ark into play, get a 9,000 body turn sideways, and then on the next turn, three backups, pitch something, drop Bart's, get all our backups back, and then drop Baltier as well. That seems backbreaking, to be honest. Since I don't think it's especially likely we're going to lose any other cards here. I guess they could have Alcid in hand for Ark or something. Just take the damage. I don't want to, like, thinking I could trade Lusso with Ark is a terrible idea because Ark is more useful to me than Lusso is to them. And also they've got the whole first strike thing they could have had floating. 
Let's take the turn. I've not seen anything happen that's going to change my mind. Maria, wow, that would have been nice to curve into. It's tough. Uh, let's go to combat and get the full value off barbs. Turn some bodies sideways. If uh, my opponent wants a damage race, then a damage race they can get. J. D. Lolmo. If you're out there, drop us a comment. Nice playing with you. Another point of damage. They're just buffering. Oh, they, they do have quite a costal. Mm. I'll need to bear that in mind. Maybe keep an Aerith floating now and then. Let's go three. Let's, yeah, let's pitch one Barts. And get the other one into play. Take the field back. Just move him over. I guess I could maybe just add my counter during the opponent's turn, but this will do. And then, mm, do I want to keep Aerith active? Nah, nah. I'm, I'm kind of okay. I think my opponent's behind enough that even if they do get some kind of combat trick, I'd rather have the Maria than the Baltier. Like, we don't need more pressure just now. There's already enough on. 11,000, 10,000 hard to target. And then this guy in the middle. I'm now in a position where if they try and do anything that would target Trey with a summon, and he has quite a high target, and I suppose he could be hit by four cost Odin, then I can actually dull all three of my forwards into arc. It's that side of Trey that I just love. Best cadet by miles. So unironically playable, splashable. I feel kind of bad for the opponent that's just been uh, left a little bit behind on backups. Could be a very low backup build or something, I, I, I don't know. L L Luso's quite a good enabler of that because there's quite a few good two cost backups in those two elements. Just mulling things over just now. I think for the next turn, we want to do as little as possible, provided we're still ahead on field state. I think just holding up Aerith for should anything go wrong is a really good idea. Maybe just attack with everything and hold open Aerith. It's easy to forget that it doesn't just give you a forward hexproof. It's got to be one of the cards that's aged the best. And every now and then I forget that Aerith exists, and then I'm reminded forcibly. I got, I got uh, my winning streak up. I was 4-0 at UK Nationals, and then uh, I lost round 5 because of Aerith. Things like that leave a bit of a scar. Okay, so we've got Lusso attacking. Uh, we've got Cactuar, who can't yet target Trey. I think we can block on Trey. It just feels weird that he would attack in seeing Bart's there as an 11,000. So it feels like he's got some kind of trickery and I want to make things at least a little bit more conditional for him. Or her, I don't know. So we've got first strike on an... Is that first strike? No, it's three CP. What's the three CP going on? Not cannoneer, I'll tell you that much. 5 CP. Oh, Diabolos. Okay. So, Breaking Barts and Shrinking Trey. Gotta be, right? Well, what we do here is exactly what I said before. The block has been declared, so damage isn't going to go through. And we can invalidate at least part of Diabolos by dulling the whole field before it resolves into Ark's ability. Barts is still going to get broken because he's still a legal target. And... I don't know if my opponent has realised that Lusso is going to die too. But Lusso is definitely going to die too. Although he could now Cactuar. I keep saying he. <laughs> yeah, I think I think I just need to remind him that Lusso's dead. I'm still going to take the damage from uh, from Adele. Let's take one into damage while he's there. We go. Oh, it's the other tree. Okay, I was good to keep him alive. Car just does so much work. Especially against the really interactive elements. We're a tiny bit... Well, we're still ahead on field, but a tiny bit less so than before. And yeah, it's a shame I kind of chucked away the Barts. I'm thinking just go in with the team, maybe drop Balt here, and then keep Aerith open. Two Aeriths in hand, it's, it's practically impossible to fight through this now. Where was she last turn, huh? This feels really, really good. We're ahead on backups, on field state, and cards in hand. It's just the blowouts that Trey causes against this archetype. 
And Zidane as well, I guess. Z Zidane forced their opponent's hand in the really early stages. Baltier comes in as a 10k. Could be all sitted, but I really don't think it's likely. Just, again, hand size and coincidence and all that stuff. It's not long since our opponent completely emptied their hand on the Luzzo. What do we do next? So Lesifer's kind of lying dead in hand, and... Well, the Aird is sort of the very opposite of dead, but they can't be played, you know? They're effectively like a, a, a super conditional 1CP summon in our hand just now. I think we're still... yeah, still ahead enough in board state. Unblockable, the Dell goes through, hits another arc. Good thing arc's alive. And that's the GG! <laughs> yeah, we, that's a, a heck of a win. It's just the advantage this generates. I think that Wind always had some good matchups against Lightning and against aspects of Ice and aspects of even Dadaluma and stuff like that. I think that Wind has had decent matchups in the past against, but it just has so much more validity now with the Ding. Let's get in for one. I have no idea how much damage that is. Well, that's the game. We're back against Atlas Bear for game two. Uh, we have elected to go first. Skip out the boarding bit. This, mm, again, it's a sort of a keepable hand. It, it, it worked out last time for us. A couple of cheap plays. Oh, that's a really nice top deck. I'm not feeling confident enough in the hand to want to immediately chuck away two cards to get two backups. But I think we can lose one of these small boys, get a backup in play. and ship the turn. The first couple of turns it's important to try and figure out what your opponent's playing. I see your archer and raise you. What's going on here? Evoker for an archer, okay. Okay, the fact he's playing Evoker suggests this is a mono wind mirror and he could be playing something that's even rampier than I am. In those games, Zidane's going to be quite important to just take the, the gas out of your opponent's engine. Another thing? Dropping a Moogle. Okay, on a Geomancer. Geomancer effectively gives him one CP back. This is weird. Sure, untap him because of Geomancer. One CP. Oh, not seen that in a while. That's the first strike, right? Three thousand with first strike. Is this like mono wind aggro? I don't know. Oh, mono wind, uh, mono wind spice Sicilian. Okay, then I think that uh, it's a little bit too destructive to play Lesiford. Maybe. Maybe. One more backup. Yeah, I guess we can go for uh, get a little bit of a blocker in play. Effectively, he feels a little bit cheaper. Kind of on the fence whether I should just drop the other Lesiford as well and get Trey into play here just for more bodies. If this is like evasive, one cost Shemhazai type of a deck. Then I think a damage race is maybe more appropriate. Fast opening for both parties, though. Let's see what we get here. Yeah, this, this is first strike. I guess the first strike could actually be really quite interesting with the power reduction in wind. It's not quite enough with new Diablos. Ah, there we go. Spice Azillion. So this is uh, new age mono wind unblockables. Actually, this is a pretty bad matchup. So, uh, as I've been harping on about wind recently, there's a real improvement in the removal we do have now that Chaos Walker of the Wheel feels better. But that's only really going to make sense in mid-games, long games, when you've got Zidane who's able to start stripping people's hands. Yep, I'll just take the damage. <laughs> Choosing the Archer. Yeah, the, the, the point was, uh, I really don't think, apart from Baltier combos, I really have a lot of removal that's particularly expendable on Small Guy Rush. And two Spice Sicilians? Really? I think this would feel 
different if there weren't two spicy aliens in the field already, but... There we go. The attack. Just wait till declaration. Chaos Walker, why do you give this to us now? I guess I could break the archer, but if this is aggro, if it's low curve, they've probably got a ton of forwards in the deck. I don't know. I don't know if that's really in our favour. They could drop something absolutely horrible. If they dropped like a Luso or something, I don't know how much of the tactics engine they could be playing. Maybe the last game just tainted me. Now my opponent's wondering if I if I have to use the EX here. And uh, it, a reminder for everyone at home that you never have to. But... Yeah, learn the fun way at Nationals. It was one of the tables next to me in some sort of a ridiculous situation where they hit a Leviathan into damage and the only target was 5 cost Delita from Opus 3. There were a lot of judge calls that day. Good times. Two more backups, not really what I wanted to see. I've already got some massive regret at not playing Trey to go into damage race mode to try and beat the Spice Sicilians. Spice Sicilians are a very big upgrade to a mid-sized number of bodies, but that changes if I have equally as many bodies on field and then card quality starts to matter more. So we hit an evoker into damage. I don't really care about what we hit into damage here, we just need to get there quickly because yeah, removal is maybe going to let us down here. Not that I think Cactuar or anything that's not in this deck would really help us out. We could do stupid stuff like Barbaricia, Cactuar. Hmm. Let's get an Aerith into play. Definitely feels like time to stick Trey in. Bye, Elizabeth. I should probably just drag them, to be honest. It's just another body. I, I want my opponent to be obligated to stick more bodies onto the field if they want a chance. This is when they top deck a bunch of one-cost white mages or something. Do we have here more spice Sicilians? Oh, two of them so early is going to feel bad. I just know I'm going to take a lot of damage here, and there are no small blockers in wind. You know, I think the smallest thing that I could unironically maybe use in wind is the two cost you stole from Opus One, but you kind of don't want to. New you stole is just better against normal decks where the decks you're maybe likelier to see. <clears throat> Man, barely even needs these spices aliens with Yuffie on the field. Not seen her for a while. Oh, the world would be a different place if Baltier tapped for 3 CP. Baltier is definitely the search if we top deck another Mog. But it has to be soon before we take more and more damage. Okay, Archer gets us for another one. Nothing we can do about it. I'm slightly consoled that I don't really think there's much in our opponent's hand. I think that Chaos Walker is a little bit too risky, perhaps, in Hyper Aggro. Maybe not. Maybe that's a direction to explore. Choosing Miss Archer. More damage. Chaos Walker, so I can revert my bad decision. Barbaricia. That's fine, I think. I mean, I think she's just another sort of slightly overcosted dumb body in this kind of a game state. My opponent's never going to be able to block, but in exchange, we can never really block them. And then paying four for a 7,000 that doesn't do anything. Black Chocobo, man. I don't think it's particularly likely that they're going to need the party effect on that. Two more cards. No Baltier. No Moogle either. We've got four chances left in deck to draw what we really, really need. I think one piece of removal would win this race, but the way I see it, we're taking... Yeah, if, if they spice the in the Black Chocobo and the Archer, Yuffie's getting through for more damage. Fallacious Wanderer. Like, there's no point in holding things back to block, because... There's nothing I could block in this kind of a deck, except maybe like a hasty regular Chocobo. Shara. Shara, yeah, nothing relevant. Nothing relevant can come of Shara there, so 
I'll just get past it. Although because there was only the one target at the time, I'll just mark three on my boy. Grave hate white mage. Strange inclusion for this deck. I get the feeling it's just being included because it's a standard unit to cost backup and not because it's actually really relevant or anything this deck is scared of. Let's drop arc. Just more on curved bodies. Try and turn this into a damage race. See if we can get a good top deck. I wonder actually if we've if we'll have taken too much damage by the end of this turn. To matter at all. Like if we top deck Baltier now, he's going to need another turn to untap. I think we need summons. I think we need Chaos Walker. That's just it. <laughs> yeah, Chaos Walker on an empty hand would feel good just now. Depends how much wider my opponent goes. Even Veil Fur or something. Like if, if there was a sideboard in this game, and I know people have said this before and I don't agree there should be a sideboard, but if there should be a sideboard, I can only imagine what that Veil Fur would do. Uh, the starter deck Veil Fur. 3,000 to field. White Mage. Okay, well there goes the field for plan. White Mage doesn't really help here. It's just another small body that does something. We don't have any damaging abilities. I guess that could shut down a Baltier activation or something. Take a bullet. Yeah, genuinely, this feels like Chaos Walker or Bust now. Wow. The blind spot in wind removal that's having anything small or repeatable or anything that does like a moderate amount of damage. I can't begin to tell you how much I wish there was a carbon copy of Brynhildr. You know, Opus 1 fire, rare, 7000 damage for 3, maybe put an EX on it. Give that to wind, come on. Self's a scary lady. Hope you're listening for Opus 7. YYT spoiler. Okay, that's two more points of damage. Nothing I really mind losing. We, yeah, yeah, we can't block that. One more. <laughs> There's the Valtier. Okay. This is like, how do I save as much face as possible? Second main phase. Interesting. One ZP. What do they have? More one ZP forwards. Oh, Asura. Hmm. Do they want back Mughal? Oh no, it's a couple of a couple of forwards. I don't know. Uh, I, I don't know if that really helped as such because it's not as if they're really going to want to block with their entire task force. I think that's like just about the only way they'd lose. Okay, Bartz is another body that does nothing here. We could throw away Aerith and play it for effectively free. Now what we need here is we need a Mughal search and we probably need that search to be for Chaos Walker and then on their turn blow something up. Now we're still going to take too much damage. We would also need to hit a Chaos Walker in, in, into damage. Hmm. Now there's not even like a forward that does 3,000 on entry to all opponents field or something. Nah. Let's go to combat. See if we can provoke a terrible misplay or something. I don't believe in conceding. The only deck I think it's worth conceding to is really, really far on in a game against Yuri Anjur Mill. Okay. That's 7,000 coming at him. Probably just take it. Oh, blocking. Okay. Come on, block with everything. Block with everything. It's like there, there's still no point in holding things back because Spices Alien doesn't target my blocker. It targets that forward and gives them a, a Yuffie effect. Or Shemhazai effect. Might, might as well attack with everything. Like, my decision here is clear. I, I need a Chaos Walker stupid play and I don't know if I'm proud of it. My god, they have got all the one costs. I demand a rematch with Mono Fire. Dark Lord. Dark Lord against this deck. Do I search the Chaos Walker just now? No, I 
it would be a terrible idea to do it now because if they have another forward in hand and drop it, it wouldn't have summoned sickness. So I could do the search now, but I shouldn't Chaos Walker just now. And I don't really think Bart's does anything either. No, I need that for CP. Like, it's not worth your while running one costs just so that you've got something that can block a uh, Spice Sicilian one cost. Some one costs, like Fame Mimic Gogo, just happen to be good, but no, it's, it's a certain kind of removal. Certain kind of removal you need. I wonder if it would be worth my while running a one of sort of Pyroclasm style Veil for 3000 to board. I guess it occasionally combos with Barbie. No Yuna or anything though in, in the deck. No room for a Yuna. Oh, Shem has I. Okay. Well, this doesn't change the maths. I still can take one point of damage. And I need it to be a Chaos Walker. And then Chaos Walker, the last forward. Which, it's just the dumbest thing. Let's see. Well, I guess it would maybe have been better to take the first point of damage because there's more likelihood of there being a Chaos Walker in deck. Let's see, just making sure I've not missed a trick. Reducing a forward's power to 4,000 does nothing at all when they're all smaller than that. Diabolos does nothing either. You've only just barely got the CP to cast it and it wouldn't do anything because of Shemazai. It is Chaos Walker. Well, now that I've searched, I can't fail it. Yeah, genuinely like the only way out here was hit a Chaos into damage. And that feels bad. So yeah, I guess this is a kind of a warning lesson for anyone playing Mono Wind. Do it, but not in a room full of uh, one costs. One costs and spicy boys. Alright, let's take it. The most important damage I'll ever take. That's game. Yep. Can't do a thing. I would have needed to take it and then blow up the archer and then also chaos the Yuffie. And then, I don't know, start swinging for game. If I still kept the Aerith open, then I would have been able to do that. But nope, that's all I got. GG. It doesn't put me off Mono Wind as a deck. Whoa, everything taps down. The Spice Sicilians are attacking. Oh no. 25 damage. Seems like enough. Yep, a cautionary tale. Beware of weedy decks because it's a terrible matchup for this. But only if they're also evasive weenies. Thank you very much for, to Atlas Bear for being a good sport. Hope you enjoy Mono Wind, guys. Deck worth playing.